Hello, I'm Mark from Productive Computing and Productive Computing University. Thanks for joining us in this lesson. I wanted to share with you a lesson excerpt from a larger course called AI Essentials for FileMaker Developers. This course is especially geared for those who are brand new to the world of AI and you are already finding yourself confused, overwhelmed, and perhaps even a little reluctant to get started. Our strategy here is to teach you AI integration using both the traditional methods whereby we directly connect to providers like OpenAI, as well as teaching you the new built-in scripts and functions that Claris provides us to integrate AI out of the box. So you can expect to learn everything you need to know in order to immediately integrate AI within your own solutions, including lessons for summarizing data, providing sentiment analysis, working with memory, storing two-way conversations and their context, DDL structure for specific JSON return values, and more. Then we have a dedicated section of the course where we learn state-of-the-art AI using Google Gemini and its exciting multimodal capabilities. You'll learn how to analyze pictures for a complete and detailed analysis, and you'll be able to take audio and have that transcribed and turned into text and immediately then translated to another language, all in a single call. You'll learn how to conduct live searches within your queries, providing you with up-to-the-minute accurate data automatically woven into your results. Okay, now on to the free lesson from the course. In this lesson, we specifically explore ChatGPT, the application, as a sidekick option for you, the FileMaker developer. The first use case is having ChatGPT analyze a script. Let me take a moment and introduce you to a script that parses a receipt. First, I extract the receipt, remove the background, change it to a different file format that's more efficient. Then it reaches out to AI and parses the information that was gathered from the get live text. It does a bunch of things. And what we end up with here is a receipt that's processed and parsed in a system. So the name of the script is called process receipt. And I do have some comments in here but let's go ahead and print this to a PDF, six pages. I'll call it script PDF, put it on the desktop, close FileMaker. Here in ChatGPT, we will insert the PDF. I'll just go ahead and drag it right in there. Then I'll make a prompt that says, tell me what this does. and it should analyze it and tell us what it does. So it says image processing, background removal, and format conversion. So it knows that. The script first checks if the image has already been processed. So it's looking at my if then. It exports the image to a temporary location, removes the background using a Mac OS shortcut, which is true. If any issue occurs during processes, it retries the operation or aborts the transaction. Then it imports the image as an HEIC file. That's, and that's part one. Part two is text extraction and AI processing. It gets the live text using the built-in FileMaker function. Then it goes out to OpenAI and analyzes the data that was extracted from the image to determine the date, the vendor, the total amount, and the credit card, only the last four digits, or based on the last four digits. Then we have AI parsing rules, which I give it a bunch of information in the prompt to identify certain key names. So I abbreviate my cards as MasterCard, Amex, and so forth, which aren't ever going to be listed exactly like that in the actual extracted text. So I'm telling it to interpret the last four and then convert that to an actual name of a credit card. Then it does some data entry, handles some errors, and then does some final output. And um, anyone reading this would get a very accurate depiction of what the script does. And if I didn't include any comments, it would still come up with almost as much detail here because it knows what an if does. It can see the fields I'm setting. It knows the names of those fields and it puts it all together and comes up with its educated guess as to what this script does, even if I had no comments. If I had comments, which I do, then it gives even more information to the AI engine and it can come up with a really good depiction of this in business terminology. So if you were in a situation where you inherited a very large system and you had some heavy duty scripts 
It might be easier for the AI to chew on that and give you a summary of that versus you having to go through line by line and put that together. This will certainly save you some time in getting a summary or a flyover of what a script is doing and in turn what an entire system does if you analyze a few of these together as a collective. You can kind of bring it all together and have the AI help you with that process. So it's a great use of AI for a FileMaker developer. So the next use case is the fact that ChatGPT knows FileMaker. ChatGPT knows all about the FileMaker functions and the general use of FileMaker. And if you present it with a situation, it'll actually talk through and work through uh, how to accomplish something in FileMaker. So let's just throw it a softball here and we'll just say list all the FileMaker functions having to do with gathering user data. And let's see what it comes up with here. So it says get account name, get account privilege set name, get current privilege set name, get username. Then it goes through the NIC address, device, screen height, all of that stuff. And then it subcategorizes these by user authentication, environment, interaction, locale, security, and so forth. So not only does it know what these things do, it actually categorizes them for you just with that simple prompt. How about this? Construct a custom function to go through a portal and pull out all the fields within with parameters for up to three field names. Let's see what it does there. So it knows it's a FileMaker function because it already knows we're talking about FileMaker. And then it talks a little bit about the setup, the fields that you'd have, the logic, the prerequisites, then the parameters. Then it actually creates the custom function using a let here. And it goes on to show you the actual code that you can copy. Gives you an overview, some examples, and other options. So there's a lot here to be gained. Is it 100% accurate all the time? No. But I find that the stronger the model you use, the better the result. So for example, as of this recording, I'm using ChatGPT 4O, which stands for 4 Omni, versus the Mini. The Mini is quick, but it doesn't always get it right. With the 4O version, you can ask it an intelligent question, and for the most part, it'll give you a very intelligent answer. And it gives you a place to start or some things to think about or some things to research and test on your own. But it's fantastic at coming up with a strategy. As an example, to, you could ask it a question like, well, we'll ask it right now. Uh, what's the best way to gather a found set of records? and calculating the unique items for a certain field. And it'll go through and probably give us two or three different options here. Let's see. So gather found set of records, talks a little bit about what that's like, go to the layout, loop through the layout, set a variable, and continue to set the variable, and then calculate unique items where we use the unique values variable for that. And it's using that function, unique values. Then it tells you to count the unique values and then shows you the complete example. And it even provides an alternate approach like execute SQL to use the distinct option there. So when it comes to general consultation, script use, function use can be a very intelligent help sidekick for your FileMaker development on a regular basis. Another great use for ChatGPT as a professional FileMaker developer is its ability to create small batches of sample data. So for example, say I want to create 20 contacts with city, state, and zip in the US with fake company names, company names, and emails along with along with website. Make this CSV downloadable. So it'll go through and it will create 20 contacts, 
that look like real contacts. In other words, it'll be meaningful sample data. And it will also make it CSV downloadable. So it will do all that and comes back with a downloadable fake contacts option. So let me download this to the desktop and we'll take a quick look at it. Okay, here we go. We've got our company, our city, state, zip, email, website. We don't have street and we don't have individual names. So let's go ahead and enhance that. And you can say something as simple as now with individual names, first and last, along with street, and make the company more meaningful as if it was a real company name. Now, because my first prompt said something like make it downloadable, it's not showing me its analysis as it's doing that. So it's analyzing in the background invisibly and then just giving, giving me the final result. That's not as interactive as just letting it show you the result and then you can refine it, refine it, refine it until you're happy and then tell it to make a CSV format that you can either copy and paste into a text-based file or you could just tell it to make it downloadable. So let me just see what this is. This will be version two with some refinement. It's changed the name to Detailed Fake Contacts. Now we have first and last name, an actual street address, city, state, zip, a company that looks like a company even more than it did before because before it just said company one, two, three, four, five, a, some emails and some websites. So that's great. Now I could go on and further say, make the website a derivative of the company name so that it looks like the website is part of the company name or associated with that. And then I could say correlate the email domain with the website domain so that it all looks like it's one continuous contact. I could do that and it would come back and deliver that. So this is great. This saved me a ton of time from either writing it out by hand or maybe going somewhere and trying to find some fake data. You could tell it exactly how many records you want into the exact specification. Now, would this work for tens of thousands of records? It could, but not through ChatGPT necessarily. You'll probably run out of tokens as of this recording. But as AI evolves, it wouldn't surprise me that we could eventually say, hey, I need 20,000 records of this, 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 and give it all that information. And then moments later, you'll have a downloadable file with 20,000 records that you can import and use. And then you can turn around and say, well, that was contacts. Now do invoices and line items, return it as JSON, and you know, construct a whole data collage, if you will, and have that delivered to you with the snap of your fingers through artificial intelligence, uh, that's a whole lot better than typing it and quite frankly, a lot better than any way we've had to do it before for the most part. So that is creating sample data using ChatGPT, which is essential when we test systems and build systems and push them to their limits with meaningful data that actually fits inside the fields we're creating. Sample data is really the key to a better solution. So in our next example, we'll use ChatGPT to analyze an image. And although we don't normally analyze images on a regular basis as a FileMaker developer developing a solution, customers will often ask us to analyze pictures either for semantic search capability or for description, where you might want to come up with tags for a picture, uh, describe a picture based on its color, its type, its orientation, its location, the type of scenery it is, what it thinks it is a picture of, things like that. So let's take a look at how we can do that in a basic way. And we'll do that here with ChatGPT. I've got a picture of a landscape. I'll, that's all I'll say about it. Then we'll let ChatGPT do its thing. And I'll just say something as simple as tell me about this picture and it will analyze the picture and tell me about it. This image is a breathtaking view of Yosemite National Park. So not only does it know that it's breathtaking, but it actually knows where it is based on how it can recognize things. Of course, I kind of gave it a softball. It's probably a highly recognizable park. If I gave it something a little bit more difficult, it might struggle with that. But if there's key indicators, that um, give a picture away based on its location, it will definitely pick up on that. 
It's talking about the type of view it is from a lookout point, the Yosemite Valley below, surrounded by granite cliffs and dense pine forests. The sky is painted with vibrant colors indicating either sunrise or sunset, causing warm tones. So now what I'll do is I'll ask it to come up with some, come up with a few tags for this picture, at least seven. So it'll come up and determine seven tags that it thinks are most appropriate for this picture if you were to categorize it in a database. And notice how it even puts the hash mark there. So we have Yosemite National Park, Tunnel View, Nature Photography, Scenic View, Travel Destinations, Wilderness Adventure, and so forth. So pretty remarkable if we wanted to have a database of images and have them immediately tagged as to what they are. Let's throw it a hardball, like count the number of colors used. Let's see if it knows that. This image contains 106,340 unique colors. Now, I don't know if there's any way on Earth that you could prove that. We just have to take its word for it, I guess. But it sounds about right. And it's interesting information nonetheless. That could tell you image density. That could tell you a lot about an image. So if we take the concept learned here, that we can take container data and potentially analyze it, tag it, categorize it, separate it, sort it, organize it, then that makes a very powerful use case for us as a FileMaker developer to assist somebody, an organization, a user, with their data, to describe things in a way that would take months, if not years, to do manually, especially if you consider a lot of users and customers and organizations have thousands and thousands of pictures that they've collected, and they've probably given that picture a description, and they've probably tagged it loosely in their own way, if you're lucky. But if they haven't, then this becomes trivial for artificial intelligence to do. And you're delivering great value at a relatively low cost when compared to doing this manually. So you see me demonstrate just a handful of opportunities and exciting things you can do with ChatGPT as a sidekick to your FileMaker development or as a foundational baseline knowledge of what the AI can do, where you can experiment with ChatGPT, kind of get your ducks in a row, figure out what you want as a developer, and even work with the customer side by side to say, hey, let's run a few prompts through. Is this what you're looking for? Is this kind of information useful to you? And then you can have that playground uh, determined, make some notes, and then go off and actually do this with the AI integration that you plan on doing programmatically. So whether you're new to AI or looking to deepen your understanding, this course will help you take your FileMaker solutions to the next level. And we're excited to have you join us. If you are interested in this course, you may want to consider investing in the University Bundle, which gives you access to our entire course library for one yearly subscription price. So to learn more, you can find us at ProductiveComputingUniversity.com. Thanks again for joining us on this video, and we hope to see you in one of our courses, especially if you want to learn AI from the ground up as it works with Claris FileMaker Pro. Love to have you. See you there. Thanks for watching.